Welcome back to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. I'm Richie, and this is Jailbreak. In this particular episode, we're going to be stopping in a place called Wagon Wheel, Arizona. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's a Petrified Forest National Park. And I've always been intrigued with Petrified Forest, Petrified Stones, etc. Now, there's a lot of stories circulating around this, and I'm going to try to cover all of them in this video. This is going to be a long video, and this video is going to have a lot of opinions that are floating around all of this. What is petrified wood? How does it form? We're going to cover some of the mud flood. We're going to cover some of the biblical flood. We're going to cover what science says, and we're going to even touch on NASA. So this is going to be a good video. You're going to want to sit back, relax, and check this out. So a few weeks back, I was traveling through New Mexico into Arizona. Massive windstorm, sandstorm in New Mexico. Blowing me all over the place. Well, the sandstorms in New Mexico were bad, but they eventually blew me into Arizona. And that's what brought me to the Petrified Forest National Park. And it was quite the sight. Surrounded by tourists donning their face masks in this wide open outdoor area, looking at fake National Park built Pueblos, and the answers they offered for why petrified forests existed. Well, the answers they gave me and the answers I've researched don't quite answer what the petrified wood is or isn't. So we're going to go a little in depth here. According to geology.com, petrified wood is a fossil. It forms when plant material is buried by sediment and protected from decay due to oxygen in organisms. Then, Groundwater rich in dissolved solids flows through the sediment, replacing the original plant material with silica, calcite, and pyrite, or another inorganic material such as opal. The result is a fossil with the original woody material that often exhibits preserved details of the bark, wood, and cellular structures. Some specimens of the petrified wood are such accurate preservations that people do not realize they are fossils until they pick them up and are shocked by their weight. These specimens with near-perfect preservation are unusual. However, specimens that exhibit clearly recognizable bark and woody structures are very common. Now, in preparation for making this video, I found it very difficult to find any explanation of what petrified wood was and how it was formed in layman's terms. It was almost impossible. And while walking around the petrified forest, I found stone structures like this that looked exactly like they were the foundations of a previous civilization. A lot of what I was looking at reminded me of things like Pumapunku. Now, what they tell you and what you see many times are two different things. I, for one, don't necessarily believe most of our history whatsoever at all. And believe it or not, the quote-unquote authorities lie. You don't believe it? 
or you don't want to believe it? Well, here's an article that I did a video on years ago from physics.org, and it's called Moon Rock Turns Out to Be Fake. The Dutch National Rijksmuseum made an embarrassing announcement last week that one of its most loved possessions, a moon rock, is a fake. Just an old piece of petrified wood that's never been anywhere near the moon. Now, this was given to Prime Minister Willem Drees Jr. in 1969 by the U.S. Ambassador to the Netherlands, J. William Middendorf II, during a visit by the Apollo 11 astronauts, Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin, soon after the first, quote-unquote, moon landing. Drees has been out of office for 11 years, but was considered an elder statesman. Now think about that. Why would NASA astronauts show up to a prime minister of a country and award him with a moon rock only for it to be fake? Because believe it or not, not everything you see, not everything you hear is real. So that leads me to believe many things that I'm seeing here and the vague way they explain the origins of petrified wood means something else is going on here. Well, a lot of people have alternate explanations, and I'm going to run through a few of them. So try to keep an open mind, or don't, at any rate. When looking at this national park, after, of course, paying your $25 to enter into this giant, almost barren area that looks just like the Badlands in New Mexico, California, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, etc., You will find some very decorative rocks, but lots and lots of mounds everywhere, like the ones you're seeing right now. Some of them show different color sediment, and they are quite beautiful. But finding the actual petrified wood isn't quite as easy as you would imagine. Honestly, when you drive in here, you can drive for quite a while in this quote-unquote national park and not see anyone at all, which is exactly what happened to me. As I traveled through this vast national park, all I saw were what appeared to be an area that was at one time flooded with water and the water somehow drained away, leaving these large mounds that were very rich in minerals, very colorful, and very, I don't want to say, it looks like it was made. How about that? It looks like an aquarium that you decorated. All of this in every direction, and they call it a petrified forest. It looks like an area that was flooded, that was drained. And I think that plays a lot into how the wood becomes what seems to be semi-precious stones. One theory that tries to explain many things that we're seeing, including the petrified wood, is the mud flood theory. Now, I don't subscribe to any of these. I'm just telling you what's floating around out there. The mud flood is a relatively young idea, and even though I enjoy a good conspiracy more than most, I hadn't heard about this until recently. A general synopsis of this theory is that within the last hundred to thousand years, Civilization was reset and humanity lost much of its knowledge and many advanced technologies. This reset was caused by a huge flood that covered the land in a few feet worth of sediment. A few theorists equate this flood with the great flood of the Bible. If this theory is true, it would throw the Bible's timeline off by more than a thousand years. There's even a few theorists that believe that church steeples were used to radiate electricity through the air and that giants ruled the earth. But that is a whole different story that would require diving into a rabbit hole head first. 
So for now, we'll just cover the basics. The proof of this flood comes from many examples of buildings that seemingly have been buried either fully or partially under the ground. There are pictures circling the internet showing Russia's Winter Palace, the U.S. Capitol Building, and the St. Mary Magdalene Church having been dug out to reveal lower levels than previously known. There are three examples of this of this that seem to be commonly used by supporters of the mud flood conspiracy as evidence. There are other various examples used, though, as countless examples of buildings with windows below ground level exist. These pictures make it seem as though some of these buildings had been intentionally buried and forgotten about. That's one theory that a lot of people present to me, and I just don't believe it because the internet is the internet. Pictures are pictures. If you haven't been there on the ground yourself, like I often do, you're just basing what you believe on what other people are telling you all over again. So there as they say, is that. From my own personal experience of actually visiting sites that have an abundance of petrified wood like what I'm showing you right here, every single one of these locations looks to be a moonscape, a barren, badland, wasteland type area speckled with remnants like this. Every one of them looks exactly like it was once covered with water and the water was somehow drained away. In my opinion, this defies everything that we know, unless, of course, you reach back into the ancient art of alchemy, turning one compound into another. Because I have no idea how you can turn regular wood into what appears to be semi-precious stones. I've got some close-ups, and some of these are amazing. Now, with all the tourists congregating at the appointed places in the park, I found this white tree stump alone. Nobody was around. It was on the side of the road, and I was absolutely enamored by it. Not only was it different than the others because it was bright white, but when you looked closely at it, it seemed to be bedazzled with small diamonds. It was amazing. All the footage you're seeing and all the footage you will see on this channel it was taken by me with one of several cameras. So I've been there and I've done that. I'm not making my, my supposition off videos I've seen on YouTube or things I've read on the internet. I'm actually there and I show it to you. Several years back, I videotaped in 4K Devil's Tower before anyone else did. And it was up on YouTube for a long time until YouTube saw fit to take my channel down completely with my half a million subscribers, my 2,000 plus videos. But many people think of places like Devil's Towers as the bones or remnants of giants that once walked this land. And I know many people just rolled their eyes, but let me tell you something. There's more evidence on Earth and always has been, of giants. People from 8 to 12 to 15 foot tall were found all over the earth and reported on by numerous sources, including Sir, Sir Petrie, Abraham Lincoln, etc. All of this came to a sudden stop in 1947 when the elites basically took control of the mainstream media. It wasn't that bad back then, not as rampant as it is now, but there was absolute and unequivocal evidence of giants all over the place. Do I think these towers and do I think these rocks, etc. are bones of giants? I do not. Now the point of this video isn't to push any conspiracy one way or the other, but there's a lot of them. Now a conspiracy is simply two people conspiring to fool others. I still cannot find a reasonable logical explanation on how wood 
regular old trees felled can somehow turn into stone. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever at all. And again, when you go to places like physics.org, The Crimson, you go to any number of science magazines, which if you follow me, you realize I've been doing this for a long time. It's something that interests me greatly. I cannot find any logical explanation for any of this. And once more, when you look to the authorities, oftentimes they are more than happy to spread false information to keep people calm. They don't want to cause a hysteria. But it always seems whenever there's natural oddities like these right here, it's suddenly turned into a national monument or a national park where you must be monitored and you must pay a fee to enter. This land is your land. This land is my land, as long as you pay the admission price. Now in this video, I presented some things that are considered conspiratorial, but for time immemorial, there have been stories of floods, a great flood that overtook the earth, which would explain how fish and other sea life have been found and discovered in huge numbers at places like the top of Mount Everest, for instance. And also, things that people take for granted, like the laws of physics, like the law of gravity. Gravity has never once been anything more than a theory. Here's Neil deGrasse Tyson backing up exactly what I'm saying right here. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> Wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. So once you start researching things like Devil's Tower, petrified wood, alchemy, floods, sea fossils at the highest points on earth, you realize everything isn't as it seems. And as humans with the ability to research for ourselves on the internet, on reputable sites, science websites, physics.org, NASA, etc., you find out a lot of things. Just going along with the flow isn't what I do, which is why I overland and spend a lot of time where you're looking right now, filming things like this right now, for those that rely on the internet because they can't get out any longer. It's funny how people won't believe in things unless they see it in the media. The mainstream media recently is pushing very hard that aliens are here, but we're not advanced enough. We haven't evolved enough to understand them, so they're staying in the background for now. But many of these places that I show you, people always think it's the result of ancient aliens coming down here and mining for gold and turning monkeys into humans so that we could be workers for them. I, for one, do not believe that whatsoever at all. We were created by God in his image, in my opinion. If your opinion varies, that's fine. But just know this one thing. Do not believe everything you see on the mainstream and question everything unless you've seen it with your own eyes. And once you've seen it with your own eyes, research it or don't. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to see the comment section below. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe, and I will return the favor with a comment below. I am out.